Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, you made it. You made it. You know, it's funny how one hour can feel like three hours. Have you ever noticed that? I mean, it just seems like uh, sometimes that's a tough transition to make. You made it. Congratulations. I uh, feel like I uh, have a contribution to make around the decisions around changing the hour. I'm just going to, maybe this is a petition uh, or something that just, hey, just move it from Saturday night to Friday night. That's all I'm asking. That's all I need. I mean, is that why you formed super PACs? I mean, can we do something and just make a, a motion or something to move this thing from Saturday night to Friday night for all of our sakes? That would be that would be especially helpful. This is an exciting day in part because Pastor Liz is back from maternity. So welcome back, Pastor Liz. Also last week, we had a lot of new members join Bethany. I think we might have their picture up there. That's them. They are around. Uh, let's uh, give them a hand too because I know they're uh, among us. If you see them, please reach out to them and greet them as well. Speaking of membership today, we are in number seven of our eight in the series called Foundations. And if you're here for the first time in our series, we're, we're kind of asking the question, what are the foundations, what, what are the essentials when it comes to being what a faithful follower of Jesus would be, would look like, would believe? Not so much what you would do, but, um, but belief. Uh, what are the essentials? So we've been walking through what are the essentials? And by doing so, we're also kind of answering the question, therefore, what are the non-essentials? Things that we can agree to disagree around, and we don't have to break fellowship as a result of it. And so if you miss the past couple months, these somewhat kind of build on each other. So please go back and take a look at the, um, the, the messages so you can catch up. Today we're looking essentially at the end of Jesus' earthly ministry and this is his command, this is kind of his final command, and it's his farewell address, if you will. Now, this is going to explain why you're even here. This is going to explain what Jesus is about to, to say, explains why you are even uh, in this place, in this building. And it also gets to the question of your personal why. Right, that everybody from time to time, you kind of ask the why questions. The why God am I in this situation? Or why God am I in this season of life? Or why God am I in this place of, of employment? Or why God am I in this relational context or struggle or victory? And so every once in a while we ask this question around why, why God? And it's a question of purpose. And so what Jesus is about to say addresses this as well. So this is really an important topic and so this is, this is what happened. It was following the resurrection. Remember, Jesus died. He rose on the third day. But before he ascended to heaven, he spent some time, and he appeared to first the, the, the women close to the tomb, and then to other people, and then to, to the disciples and the followers. And, and so this is what Matthew recorded um, his farewell address uh, included. Okay, so this is... Matthew chapter 18, verse 16. Matthew wrote, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And I love how honest Matthew is on this one, you know. You think you would kind of write something great about the disciples, but, but no. They, he said basically, but some doubted, which kind of begs the question, why would you... Why would you doubt? I mean, wouldn't it be awesome if Jesus was right in front of you? Wouldn't that be terrific? Wouldn't you absolutely then therefore have no doubt whatsoever? And yet, there were those there in the discipleship circles, they doubted. Now, why did they doubt? Well, here's why they doubted. Because it was, um, because just a second ago, they watched him die on the cross. And I, I think you know this. And when people die, they don't come back from the dead and so so they were overwhelmed they didn't know what to believe they were they were in doubt that this whole thing was actually unfolding before their very eyes and then jesus launched into his farewell address and listen if the church would have embraced what jesus is about to say everything would have changed everything would change instantaneously if the church uh, embraced what jesus is about to uh, explain in fact if you embrace this, if I embrace this, change would happen immediately in your life as well.
So this is what he said. And Jesus came to them and said, all authority, all authority in heaven and on earth, right? Everything, everywhere. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. To which they thought, wait, wait, wait. Does that mean this Messiah thing that we were hoping about, is that that's a real thing, that that's true? To which Jesus would say, yeah, all authority rests on me. And they're thinking, but, so in other words, you're the king? You're actually the king with all of authority? You have the key to heaven and earth, and you're the king, the ultimate king, and where are your guides? Where are your people? Where are your kind of posse? Is is that what you're trying to say to which Jesus is, is trying to communicate, yes, you are indeed. And with the association uh, with, with me, as you associate with me, comes extraordinary blessings. That, that your membership, if you will, as a citizen of, of the kingdom of God, comes with extraordinary benefits. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But it also comes with extraordinary responsibility. And if you're going to continue, Jesus would say, to be my people. Do you realize that everywhere you go and everything that you do reflects on me? And if you're going to continue to associate with me, he would say, if you're going to continue to wear my brand, if you're going to continue to use my name and leverage my name, do you realize, one, you're going to be a profound blessing for other people, and number two, this means that you have an awesome responsibility as well to represent me? To which in the moment in front of their Lord and Savior, they're like, yes, are you kidding me? Absolutely, we're your people. No problem. Happy to take on that responsibility. We're your followers. We're your people. Now, where are we going? What happens next? I mean, is now the time that we're going to reestablish Israel, you know, the kingdom of Israel on earth is now the time we're going to, hey, are we going to retake Jerusalem now? Because let's retake something. I mean, you conquered death, right? Can we conquer something, people, Rome? Let's, what happens next? Let's go conquer, you know, something. What's about to happen to his Jesus would smile and he would say, as we're about to discover, now I have bigger plans for, the, for you than that. I've got bigger plans than Jerusalem. I've got bigger plans than Judea. I've got bigger plans in the region of Galilee. You have no idea how big the world actually is, but you're not about to conquer anything. Instead, I'm going to send you out with an invitation. I'm going to send you out and I'm going to have you extend the same invitation that I extended to you when I first met you. Therefore, go and make disciples. Now, in this phrase, and the ones that follow, there's several participles here in the Greek text, but there's one imperative, and the imperative here is the command to make disciples. Now, the implication is this, is as you're going along, right, as you're living, as you're doing life, wherever you do life, um, you know, wherever you travel, yes, you have a responsibility and accountability. Uh, you're going to, if you're going to associate yourself with me, as we said, to make sure you're going to be engaged in some form or fashion of making more Jesus followers. In other words, Jesus could say, if I show back up in a year, I expect there to be more of you. If I show back up here in 10 years, I expect for there to be a lot more of you. For the rest of your life, part of your responsibility as you go, as you raise your kids, as you do life, as you age, part of your responsibility is you're gonna, if you're going to associate with me is to take the mantle of responsibility of living the kind of life in such a way and engaging in, with people in such a way that you multiply yourself, you replicate yourself, that there will be more of us because of you than there was before. So as you go, Jesus would say, multiply. And then he says this. Now, this is where they tap the brakes on this. This is where the excitement level came down a little bit. He goes, therefore, go and make disciples more followers of me of all nations, of all people groups, to which they immediately thought, wait, we've never been outside of Galilee. What are you talking about? I mean, this is the only world we know. I mean, you want us to make disciples of every nation? Are you talking about Rome? Because I don't think this is really going to fly so well in Rome. Are you talking about the Samaritans? You're not talking about this. He's talking about the Samaritans, too. We're going to have to, we're going to have to, the Samaritans, really? I mean, you know about them. So Jesus said, no, 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 listen. 
You are to go to all people groups and baptize them. And teaching them, he would say, he said, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And think of the implication of that statement. He's like, I want you to take what I have taught you, and I want you to replicate that, I want you to live that out, and then I want you to teach it to others. Hey, remember about that thing about not judging the speck in your neighbor's eye because of the log that's in your eye? Hey, I want you to live that out. When it comes to judging, no, no, no. I want you to remember that's what I taught you. Don't, don't judge like that. And then, as you live that out, I want you to teach that very same lesson to other people as, as well. Remember when I taught you about the extra mile? Remember, if someone makes you go a mile, then go an extra mile. And I want you to pour out that kind of grace as you go and as you live. And then, I want you to teach that to other people. I want you to teach people to be that Samaritan in the parable. Remember that I told you the Samaritan who stopped and helped out a stranger who was in, in need, even though they really that inconvenienced the Samaritan. I want you to be like that Samaritan, and I want you to teach other people to to do the same thing. Hey, remember that parable about the prodigal son? Remember the older brother who was kind of hanging back and got real jealous because he wasn't content whatsoever with all the gifts that he had already been given by his father? And, he, and because of his jealous, jealousy, he became kind of angry at that prodigal son when he returned. I want you to be um, remember that. I don't want you to act in a way where you're discontent, you're selfish, and you're jealous of anybody else. I mean, you can be content with me. And then I want you to teach that to other people, right? I want you to teach that to them, and I want you to teach, do unto other you know, people as they would have done unto them. In fact, I want you to, to ratchet that up even more so. I, I want, this is what I want you to teach. I want you to teach people to love one another the way I have loved you. I want you to live that out, and then I want you to teach that. To teach to love um, your enemies the way that I um, loved my enemies, the way I loved you after you betrayed me, Jesus would say, the way I loved you after you abandoned me, after you quit believing in me, and I still loved you. I want you to teach that. I want you to live that out and teach that as well. Hey, I want you to teach them to wash one another's feet. You know, remember that night when I washed your feet and they're all like, yeah, yeah, that was, that was embarrassing. I can't believe that. Still can't believe you did that. Yeah, I want you to do that. That any time you get a little too big for your britches, go find someone's feet to wash. I want you to live that out. And then I want you to teach it. I want you to teach everything that I've commanded you to do. Now, here's a question. What if we'd been doing that all along? I mean, what if the church, we know the reputation now of the church, but what if the church had been doing that since the beginning? Do you think our reputation would be different? Do you think the world would be a better place? Do you think the church would be a healthier place? Do you think people would be more comfortable walking into a church for the first time if we had been doing what Jesus commanded us to do all along? If that was the church's focus to obey Then Jesus gives him a promise. He, gives, he says, and surely, he says, look, don't worry, because I can see that you're overwhelmed. Because imagine, they were quite overwhelmed. You want us to go to the whole world? We don't know how to do this. And we don't know how to talk. Um, we don't know how to talk to Gentiles. We don't even know any Gentiles, they probably were saying. And the Samaritans and Romans are our enemy. This is too much for us. And so Jesus appreciates the fact that they're overwhelmed. And maybe you're overwhelmed thinking about what we just said. And so he says, but look, I'll make you a promise. If you do this, surely I will be with you. I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
You keep that up. Here's the question about this verse. Who is the you in that? Who, who's the you in that I am with you always? Is the you you? Is the you me? Do you know the you is you? The you is those of you who think you don't have anything spiritually to contribute, but you want to learn more. The you is all of you who've been walking or doing your best to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, only maybe you feel like you haven't done it so well. Uh, the you here are the you, all the yous who have tried to be a part of building the church, but have been wounded by the church. The you is the yous that, when you look at other Christians, you're not sure you want to be like them for other reasons. Who's the you in this? The you is you. The you is those of you who are partnering with your king. You are the disciple makers. Now, I know this answer is kind of rhetorical, but do you want Jesus to be with you? Then according to Jesus, you have to be with him. Because he's got way bigger plans for you than maybe you realize. I mean, he's a way bigger deal than you and me. And he's got a way bigger agenda. And a way more important agenda than my personal agenda agenda do you want jesus to be with you then you have to choose to be with him and so the question is are you with him on this or to make him specific is any of your time or any of your resources already pre-decided have you already made up your mind i'm going to dedicate some time i'm going to i'm, I'm going to dedicate what I'm doing at work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to figure it out with this relationship. I'm going to try to figure it out where the tension is in my life. I have a feeling where the tension is in my life is probably where Jesus is trying to get a hold of me and get my attention to say, are you kind of obeying everything that I taught you to do in this tension that you're feeling? Have you pre-decided to dedicate systematically your resources, your time, your energy toward the king's business? Or are you just about your own? Or am I just about my own? What I know is that every week, dozens of teenagers and adults are making disciples. Maybe not of all nations, but maybe of the next generation. And there are people meeting in homes, meeting in this building, and they're trying to figure it out. They're asking questions. How do we do this? How do we live this out? How do I live this out in my difficult marriage? How do I live this out with my difficult boss? How do I live this out with some of the private demons that have got a hold of me in strongholds? How, how do I live this out? How do I forgive? Can you pray for me? Can you keep me accountable? I want to stay focused on my king's business. Otherwise, it just, it's just all about me. Every people, people share stories with one another, and whenever they share stories with one another, everybody else learns from their story because we discover that we're not all that different when it comes to our spiritual walk. To follow Jesus means putting feet on your why, on your faith. And for the people who show up on the weekends here and during the week to serve other people in the name of Jesus, or for those of you working with local organizations that have the same goal. And because many of you understand that when you meet somebody's physical needs in the name of Jesus, it opens the door for maybe somebody to walk through and, and begin to follow Jesus. So for those of you already doing this, I want to I commend you and I want to thank you and I want to encourage you. And I can make this promise without any hesitation. Your Savior is with you because you have decided to be with your Savior in this. That you've been saved not for some life after, 
But you've been saved for life now. You've been saved for a mission, for a bigger why. So the seventh foundation, the essential, is Jesus' followers are multipliers. Jesus' followers are multipliers, collectively and sometimes individually. See, I don't know what maybe some of your little whys might be all about, because we all have some little whys, right? Purposes. I got to get my kids through school. That's like, that's my mission. And we have, I, I got to secure my financial future. That's kind of my mission. I got to lose the 10 pounds, 15 pounds. That's my mission. We have these little missions, these little whys, and they get elevated over and above the big mission. And so I want to encourage you to to look at all your little whys through the lens of your, of your call, your contribution. Because your contribution in, in whatever environments you are in, your, your, your work environment, your, your, your volunteer environment, your retirement environment, your contribution, figure out how to align it with your mission from your king and to the degree that you make this personal is the degree by which you will put feet to your faith and you will be a part of changing the world because that's exactly what happened after jesus gave that command they figured out a way to multiply and change the world Two handfuls of men and women, they've never been anywhere, they couldn't, you know, that they hadn't, you know, walked, right? They, they, they were given this responsibility that was so fragile in that time, and yet, here we are because of them, and because of God. They figured it out. They were good stewards of the gospel of their generation. We have been called to be good stewards of the gospel in our generation, so be multipliers. That's how the world changed. I don't know what's occupying all the small wives in your world right now, but God has more for you. There's something bigger for you. Somebody, and keep in mind, somebody did this for you. Somebody invested in you. Whether it was a Sunday school teacher, somebody you met at work, so let's do for others what they did for us. And when we do, he will be with us because we have decided to be with him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, <laughs> we forget that, that the whole message is salvation for the sake of this world, not the next world, this world, today. So Lord, as you set us aside, Will you forgive us of some of the things that we sabotage ourselves and our mission with? Will you build up our self-esteem if that's what some of us need? Will you tear down our arrogance where we need our arrogance to be torn down? Will you light a fire in each of us? Some of us have just been nervous and waiting and thinking about you and faith. Would you breathe your spirit in all of us? It's the same spirit that unites us. We're together because we're together. Lord, we can change the world according to your will. We want that. Help us to get there in your name. Amen.